Okay, Jeff. I represent the good people of Buruku, my dear colleagues. I'm from Penn State. This is a motion on the urgent need to, for more proactive steps to abet the hardship being experienced by Nigerians as a result of the current economic recession. The House notes that the federal government, of which the National Assembly is the most important segment, has declared that Nigeria is experiencing economic recession. The House is aware that the House of Representatives wing of the National Assembly is charged with the function of representing the people, making laws for the order and good governance of the country, checking the actions of the executive arm and its ministries, departments, and agencies, and controlling the finances of the state. Also aware that in carrying out these functions, members cannot, cannot claim to be oblivious of the hardship Nigerians currently face as a result of the skyrocketing prices of foodstuff, transportation, petroleum products, and other essential commodities, which have left children, women, and the common man worse hit. Experience, sorry, concern that as a result of the economic recession, commercial banks recently reviewed upwards the interest rate paid, paid on credits to the effect that consumers of bank credit facilities now pay between 27% and 30% while the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar has not only been very unstable but highly polarized and progressively depreciating against the dollar. Also concerned that the effects of this unstable economic climate include the continuous loss of jobs by Nigerians, which is inflicting pain and suffering on the old, the young, and even the rich, some of whom had to practically abandon their base, their bases during the Yuletide, during the Yuletide season due to the pressures for assistance from dependent relatives and the less privileged in the society who are increasingly resorting to suicide and divorce as a way out of their financial constraints. Acknowledges that the executive arm of government appears to be taking various steps and formulating fresh policies to abate the economic recession and return the economy to the path of recovery and development. However, Nigerians expect the House to voice their concern by pushing for measures that will alleviate their sufferings. The House therefore resolves to set up a ad hoc tactical committee on economic recession to monitor the various steps and policies of the government, interact with the various ministries and agencies relevant to overcoming the challenges, liaise with the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, the Nigeria Labor Congress, the civil society organizations, and any other body that is considered relevant in a bid to arrest the recession and return the economy to the path of growth and stability and to report back to the House on quarterly basis for further legislative action. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I so move. Honorable Jeff, you can now lead the debate. My dear colleagues, my people, the team people have a saying that runs us. Meaning, yeah, meaning <laughs> that you continue to seek for medication as long as the airmen persist. I believe you have variations of this saying in your respective dialect. And if you ask me, it's a very apostate one in the circumstances of this motion and the prevailing circumstances in the country today. Since last year, when the National Bureau of Statistics confirmed that Nigeria was officially in recession, various steps have been taken on the executive side of the divide to try to push back the economic hardship brought on Nigerians by this recession. The National Assembly, and indeed the House of Representatives, has not been found wanting in this regard. Several motions have come on the floor that try to uh, resolve this matter. Now, in all fairness, there has been a level of success recorded as a result of the diversification uh, drive of President Muhammad Buhari, especially in the area of agriculture. Uh, wh when I get back to my constituency, I hear heartwarming stories, at least in the area of uh, pricing, reasonable pricing for the agricultural produce. If this is sustained, I think it will encourage our young ones to get back to the farms and therefore bringing down the unprecedented level of unemployment that we have in our country today. My dear colleagues, the IMF recently has gone as far as to predict that Nigeria 
the recession in Nigeria will end this year and projected that uh, the growth rate of 0.6% will be recorded this year. I'm an optimist, if you ask me. But what I can say to this is that when this does happen, I'd like to be the first to know about it so I can come stand on this floor and give my kudos to whoever is responsible for that quick fix. The reality, however, my dear colleagues, is different on the ground. The reality is that there's hardship, there's unprecedented suffering in the land. You have, un, uh, you have unemployment picking in, <coughs> unprecedented in recent time. You also have inflation at 18.3% today, which is unprecedented in a very, very long time. You have, my, my dear colleagues, uh, non-payment of salaries by many state governments. And remember that we have the minimum wage standing at 18,000. So the concomitant effect of all of this is that even when people who are in employment finally get paid, what they call it cannot even pay for goods and services because it is simply priced out of the reach of the average Nigerian. Now, you have, my dear colleagues, the, uh, you have the exchange rate to the dollar picking an unprecedented hovering around $500, 500 naira to the dollar, something in my memory that has never happened before in this country. And therefore, I think the federal government, the executive arm of government has realized, is the first to realize that the best foot forward that they have put has not indeed yielded any result. That is why early this week, the presidency through the uh, Minister of Budget and National Planning came out with what they call 12 prioritized strategies to end inflation. 12 prioritized, Mr. Speaker, if you allow me, we have to underscore uh, the point that I'll be making next. Let me just rush through the 12 prioritized strategies for ending inflation this year because the IMF has predicted that it's going to end this year. Now, this is what uh, the federal government has come up with. Restoring production to 2.2 million barrels per day with a projection to reach 2.5 million barrels per day by 2020. Next is privatizing selected public assets. Next is accelerating non-oil generating revenues, drastically cutting down costs, improving ease of doing business, expanding social investment programs, delivering on agricultural transformation, aligning money, trade, and fiscal policies, expanding infrastructure, especially power, roads, and railways, revamping the four existing refineries, accelerating implementation of National Industrial Revolution Plan using special economic zones. I decided to go through this so that you see that even though a few of them could be achieved within the shortest possible time, a majority of them are not stuff that you do within a short uh, period. It has to take a long-term implementation, meaning that, meaning that the projection by the IMF that the recession is going to end this year is not just something that will happen by itself. It's something that will take quite some time. The, the cliche, my dear colleagues, that all hands must be on deck cannot find better expression than now. We cannot leave the executive arm of government to continue to bring programs up, drop them, bring another set and drop them without this house being closely involved in the process. That is the basis for this motion. Uh, I think we should remind ourselves that section 14, subsection 1B, paragraph B, says that the primary purpose of government is the welfare and the security of the citizens. So we cannot sit by. This motion seeks one, just a long uh, prayer, as I've read out, to set up a tactical team made up, hopefully, of our in-house uh, in -house experts to monitor closely and report back for legislative input from this house. That, my, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, is my prayer. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion as amended say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. The ayes have it. Now, in view of the importance 
of the issue at stake, decided that um, we used to have a committee of uh, in-house experts, uh, members who had served in various capacities before um, coming to the House, uh, decided to just modify that and announce as the committee so that they can kickstart their work in earnest. They have been meeting before and they know themselves. So the committee will consist of the following. Honorable Moriki Husseini Abakar, Honorable Ayodele Oladimeji, Honorable Chika Abakar Adamu, Honorable Sande Katun, Honorable Linda Ipazu, Honorable Baido Danladi, Honorable Doe Diri, Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, Honorable Mahmoud Abdullah Gaya, Honorable Wale Tasir Raji, Honorable Shuaibu Abdurrahman, Honorable Jerry Alagboso, Honorable Asabe Vilita Besho, and Honorable Betty Apiefi, to be chaired by Honorable Dr. Bode Ayorinde. So the terms of reference are quite clear, and uh, you're expected to turn in the report as quickly as possible so that we can organize the sectoral debate. 